Hello, and today we are with Miss Maggie Lee, who is the Market Transformation Manager for the WWF. Good afternoon to you, Maggie. Good afternoon. Now, I have to ask you, because of course the WWF, a lot of people will think they know what it means, but could you please tell us what exactly is the WWF and why is there a lot of confusion about this name? Sometimes to lighten up the mood, we tell them that we don't wrestle anymore. We're not the World Wrestling Federation. Uh, we are actually the World Wide Fund for Nature. We um, used to stand for the World Wildlife Fund. And so in the US and Canada, it actually still does. Uh, and so a lot of people uh, would misunderstand us as the animal rights activists. Um, that is actually not what we do. We look at the environment as a whole. We try to assure that the future of nature is still there for the generations to come. Now, you're based here in Singapore. Which uh, countries and regions do you work with and help uh, with the WWF? Yes, as many of us may know, Singapore is a very small country, and the government has been doing a great job on conservation of the area as a whole already. And so WWF does not work um, on conservation in Singapore, but with other regions, neighboring regions mostly, such as Vietnam, Indonesia, Cambodia, and Burma. Now, in, you just recently, in fact, earlier this week, you were in Phuket for PHIST, the, uh, a, a, a forum about sustaining tourism within the hospitality and tourism and travel industries. Why were you there? Why was the WWF representing and why were you one of their main speakers? That's a great question. And also, uh, the reason why I was there was mostly for a food waste workshop. So it's some, somewhat mind-boggling when, uh, when people look at it and think that you guys are the wildlife guys, aren't you? And why are you working on food waste in hotels? So these three things kind of do not connect. But actually, they do. We have every reason to. And it's because if you look outside of a Phuket hotel, more than often, you would see very beautiful waters and stunning landscapes. And so these are some of the things that people want to see. And that's why the hotels are there. And guess what? These areas are most usually key biodiversity areas that we have to protect. And so working with the hotels is our best bet in conser con uh, into conservation of these areas. So it makes a lot of sense for us to have an uh, active dialogue with these hotels that are managing properties right next to areas of pristine forests and waters. So it makes a lot of sense for us to engage them in many ways, such as plastics, um, such as food waste, and also uh, for palm oil use and seafood consumption. For you, what does sustainable tourism mean? For me, as a person who travels so much, uh, I love the planet. I, I would like to spend all my time looking at it if I could. So tr tourism actually means that I want to leave just memories and take nothing with me. And so uh, that's extremely hard to do because no matter how much we'd like to not leave anything behind, there's also the carbon footprint. There's also the water footprint. We use a lot of energy when we're abroad, um, especially for a lot of us who come from, um, who live in tropical areas and um, go uh, travel in, in tropical areas. Air conditioning is always something that we use a lot in hotels. And so the energy that goes into powering these things it's actually also a polluting uh, factor. And so uh, when we talk to hotels, we understand uh, where the consumption pattern looks, uh, how their consumption pattern looks like, so that we can actually guide them into using more sustainable resources and buying more sustainable commodities. Now, at the moment, the hotel industry is very fashionable to say we've done away with plastic straws. In fact, plastic seems to be the, the worst product in the world at the moment from a hotel's perspective. But what worries me a lot is they're saying we've done away with the plastic, single-use plastic straws and we've brought in single-use paper straws instead, which doesn't make an awful lot of sense to me. Is plastic as bad as people are making it out to be? That's a great question because um, to me, it's useless for us to demonize a whole commodity. Plastics is actually a very good material. It's used in buildings, it's used in your computers, in your phones, and it's lightweight, it's waterproof, it's malleable, it's pretty much airtight. And so such a, such a material, the best thing of all is that it's very cheap. And so that's why it's applicable to so many things. But if we were to say that all plastic is bad, that is a blanket statement that I cannot agree with because we should look into every type of material we use, including plastic, very wisely. And, and we should actually begin with the end in mind. Knowing where the product would go after it's used by the consumer is something that is quite rare at this point. I, I actually hate to admit that a lot of companies are still not looking into plastics the way we should 
because people generate a product and they think that it's being used for its purpose and the rest does not matter. In fact, it does. My hometown of Hong Kong has recently been hit with the strongest typhoon in 35 years. That's longer than how long I've been in existence. And unfortunately, the oceans just gave us back, spat back out all the plastics from neighboring regions. And we saw old plastic from 20 years ago. So we understand that plastic is so good that it does not deteriorate over time. And that is actually one very interesting aspect because it should have been valued as a, as a commodity, a material that could help us throughout time, but we only use it for a few seconds to sip a drink. And so that doesn't make sense because of this disconnect. Whereas we think we should use plastic very wisely in, where, in places that should have something like that, not in some place that values disposability, convenience. In terms of the paper, because for me, hotels, there's a lot more paper waste that we're not talking about within hotels. And going to single-use plastic in just simply increases the use of paper. Is paper and tree conservation no longer an issue with regards to nature now? Or is it, should we just be focusing purely on, on these plastics? Can we forget about the trees? Forest conservation is definitely not something to be forgotten. Um, we cannot actually just say that if you don't want to use plastics, use paper instead, because that actually has much bigger environmental footprint than plastic itself. When disposed properly, plastic actually generates much less pollution than paper. So my opinion on this is that there's no easy way or no silver bullet to replace plastics completely. And there shouldn't be a reason to in the first place, because it's a great material that we should cherish and use wisely. So what I'm saying is that WWF encourages that companies and businesses and also people like you and me, we should look into how we use plastics and try to phase out as much as possible the single-use plastics because they're not meant to stick around, but they do. And so that, that's why it doesn't work out. For things that last, for example, if it's, uh, if it's your phone or your computer that's meant to be used for a long time, then you can actually buy a phone that actually uses recycled plastic, for example. So that's a way to save up on using virgin um, fossil fuel-based materials, such as normal plastic pallets. We can actually go into recycled plastic pallets and also recyclable material if none of the above work. Now this is a very complicated issue for hotels because at the moment of course they're getting a lot of PR from switching from, from the, these single-use plastics to, to, to glass to, to, to stainless steel straws and what have you. What do you, what does the WF and what do you think they should be doing with regards to this complicated issue? Well in my personal opinion um, I feel that disposability shouldn't be a word in the first place. The planet is a closed system so if we look at it that way we understand that resources should be used in a circular way so that um, if you use a glass, you can clean it and then reuse it again. This is how we were brought up in the first place. It shouldn't be the case where we just use something and dispose of it when it's out of sight, it's out of mind. So what I think is that um, as much as we can, we should actually value our resources in a way that everything comes back as a circle. Okay. So in places where we can reuse, such as in the hotel premises, I advise strongly on uh, reusing um, the, the cutlery, such as uh, steel cutlery and also glasses and ceramics. So these are some of the things that have been traditional and classy. They're almost timeless even. So reverting back to that is actually much more valuable than the convenience brought by disposing of materials. One other area where hotels can make a lot of difference with ter in terms of waste is within the bathroom, in terms of the amenities. Some hotels, are getting, the amenities are getting smaller and smaller, that you have to use two or three little bottles of the shampoo or the, or the, the gel to be able to get through the day. Uh, what are your thoughts and what is the WDF stance on that? What are they recommending hotels do with regard to hotel amenities in the bathroom? So um, in the long run, we hope that any of those disposable um, or the places where we feel that things have to be disposable to be, um, to be substituted with biofeedstock plastic. What that means is that instead of using fossil fuel based plastics, we advise on switching to um, plant based materials such as seaweed, cassava. These are some of the things that um, are relatively easier to grow and they do not compete with cash crops in, uh, in the agricultural regions. And they also produce very sturdy plant fibers. 
What's better is that I know that many universities and, um, and innovation centers are looking into using waste material such as pineapple fibers or even the pits of durian, which is very close to Singapore's hearts. So um, to reuse that type of material that had no particular use or human consumption use in the first place is an excellent idea to, for us to actually excavate the cellulose and make it into strong, sturdy fiber such as plastic. Now, you, 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 we have to point out here, you are very smart. You have a scientific background. You are a scientist. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people may not understand some of the things that you're talking about as well as you do. Does the WWF offer consultancy services to the hotels so that they, if they are genuine, like here, we're sat in the Crown Plaza in Changi Airport, Singapore, if IHG wanted to learn more about those independent, small, different types of materials, they could come to the WWF and say, tell us more teach us about it so we can make an educated decision on how to move forward. Does the WWF do that type of thing? That's such a great question, Stephen, because um, that's exactly what we do right now. We're launching the hotels program because we feel that um, hotels actually have so much potential to, um, to choose more um, sustainable ways to source their material, to operate their uh, facilities and uh, properties, and to even train and guide their staff and consumers to consume more responsibly. So we have been working with the largest hotel here in Singapore. They're a standalone premise. And inside the hotel, there are more than 80 restaurants. And so that is almost like a mini city uh, by itself. And so um, for us to be included in the operations is a true pleasure and honor. We get to experience how a hotel is run, and we understand where we can actually input on um, our, envi our environmental um, uh, expertise so that uh, the hotel operators can understand where to buy more sustainable resources, such as palm oil, such as seafood, pulp and paper, and even on reduction of food waste in the kitchen. So that is something very new for us, but uh, it's actually a very hot topic right now. Will you be expanding that service further to do rankings? Because of course, uh, what a lot of hotels like to do is say, wow, we are EarthCheck Silver or EarthCheck Gold, or we're aiming for platinum in another company. It's not just EarthCheck, there are other companies that do this. A WWF setting up a ranking system so that the hotels that you work with, they can be assessed and have a, a stamp of, uh, of approval, if you like. So we do have running scorecards on quite a few things, but not particularly on hospitality. That would be a very interesting project for us to invest our time in because um, as we are now more globalized than ever, uh, a lot of people actually really want to know whether or not they're voting with their wallets correctly. And so when I'm choosing a, a, a thousand dollar vacation, I really want to go for a guilt-free guilt -free vacation so that I can enjoy every bit of it without feeling that I'm causing the environment some harm. And so I think that idea is great and we should definitely look into it. Now, I'm sure the hotels, when they talk to you, they have a lot of, they, they learn a lot. But the same way, you are also entering a new, a new realm of business that you're not used to. What are some of the challenges that you've learned by working with that hotel here in Singapore that you didn't expect? Yes, we certainly are learning a lot as well, because once we actually get into the operations of hotels, we realize that we have a, lot, a large amount of data that we can use. For example, when you go to a hotel, uh, especially a faraway resort, or even aboard a cruise ship, you're pretty much always in the same place. You eat, you drink, you sleep, you relax, you exercise, all in one area. And so there's no better place for us to understand more about people's consumption patterns. If we look at plastic waste and food waste, we can also um, actually have an absolute amount of the wastage generated by per capita, generated over a, a period of time even. Now, you mentioned earlier you're working with some of the developing nations, Cambodia, Myanmar, uh, Vietnam. Could you mention some of the things that you're doing in those countries that will make a difference? So one of the famous uh, projects that WWF has is the Tigers program. So we have a sp dedicated team that actually goes into the forest to actually protect the habitats of tigers. We're looking into anti-poaching um, and anti-illegal um, wildlife trade as well. And we're partnering up with a lot of, for example, even fashion designers and uh, beer brands to actually promote um, the, uh, to promote the importance of cons conservation for tigers. And in, in, uh, for that, in that, is that in Myanmar, in Vietnam? Wherever the tigers dwell. Right. Now, this is something, talking about animals is something that I'd like to ask you, because in terms of this, a lot of tourists, they go on holiday, whether it's to Thailand or to Vietnam or to Myanmar, and they'll go to these elephant sanctuaries and what have you. Is this wrong? Because, of course, some of them, 
are, do help elephants? Is this something that they shouldn't be going to and giving their money and donating? Or is it something that actually helps elephants? What, are, what is the WWF and your own thoughts on this? While the WWF cannot comment specifically on any type of uh, premises or properties with wildlife or even wildlife entertainment, um, we actually very much recommend the illegal wildlife trade that may happen in the region. So that is something that we look specifically to tackle um, actually right now. So Singapore is actually a hub for many tourists to come in, such, such as this place where we're right next to at the Changi Airport. So a lot of the cargo also come in through the Singapore airport. And we understand that this is actually a big place for people who actually want to ship illegal wildlife products to use as a hub. And so um, we look into that and we feel that illegal wildlife trade should not happen in the first place. And we are trying our very best to partner up with individual national offices to impound wildlife trade and poachers. It sounds like you have an awful lot on your plate. How many people are there within WWF Singapore and in within WWF Asia Pacific? In Singapore, we have over 100 staff at WWF, some of whom are actually from WWF International and some of whom are from WWF Singapore, like myself. Do you endorse products? Uh, coming back to the hospitality, do you say, do you endorse like a cleaning product or a, a seafood to say, yes, this is WWF certified, that it is truly sustainable? And when it comes to see sustainable seafood, what does it mean? That's such a good question because we are actually putting together a program called Responsible Seafood Group, RSG for short. So what this program is, is that a lot of hotels and, uh, and restaurant operators have been asking us, they're saying that, can you please let us know of a, of a scallop um, supplier that can be more sustainable than the runs that we, we shop from already? And so we're saying that, yes, in fact, we do. We work with a lot of fish farms and fisheries across the world for sustainable seafood. And so we are trying to actually put together a program where the buyers can meet the suppliers on a platform. And that the best thing of that is that once you buy from these WWF certified or endorsed partners, you actually get recognition for it. So that um, if I'm a regular traveler or a consumer, and I want to go into a restaurant or a hotel feeling that I want a guilt-free seafood meal, I can actually identify this hotel or restaurant from this WWF sign. Wow, that's, that's quite something. Uh, does this, by this, do you actually have a growing membership? Is that something you're trying to actively? Because, well, something you mentioned earlier was about educating not only the staff, but we also have to educate the consumers. Is that something that you're actively trying to promote? Is a membership system possibly within them to, so people can join and, and learn more about this? For the responsible seafood group, I feel that the industry already understands the severity of the problem of overfishing. And so fish stock is depleting as we speak, unfortunately, and they do see it from surging seafood prices. And so they come to us and say that we really want the WWF to do something about it, not only to educate the consumers so that they know to choose wisely and buy from responsible or certified sources of seafood. On the other hand, we also try to educate um, the farmers how to actually grow fish more sustainably and so we act on every bit of that value chain and try to add value into more the education and the connectivity of the entire value chain so that people can actually reach out to each other more easily. Now, Maggie this is a very complex issue and there's a million possibly a billion questions I could be putting to you but as we are running out of time is there a question that I should have asked you that you would like something that you would like to say in particular that I haven't? So coming back to the idea of sustainability is that um, sometimes they think that it's you at ENGOs, environmental, non-governmental organizations that should do all the work. But that is in fact not true. We try to actually facilitate the process, but the decisions always lie in business owners, in consumers, in the people who are actually inputting into the market. And so by being a market transformation manager at the WWF, I try to move the market towards greener practices. We try to complement the ones that are doing the right thing, and we do try to expose the ones who are actually not complying with any of our, uh, of our asks even. So there are a, a lot of great hotels and great restaurants out there that are promoting responsible seafood, um, that are doing plastic waste reduction and even food waste reduction. So we do try to actually acknowledge them by, um, by coming together with them in a partnership. Excellent. Well, Maggie, I have to say thank you very much indeed for your time today. And of course, I wish you and the WWF the best of luck for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.